holds it, oh, fluoride's good for you. It's, you know, the dentist tells you it's, you know, it's good for your teeth, it prevents cavities. Well, there's another side to the story. And so I went to the Valdosta website, City of Valdosta, water, water quality report. And I pulled that up, got it here. And I actually called yesterday and talked with uh, the superintendent of the plant and found out that, uh, you know, I was trying to find out what exact chemical they were putting in our water, uh, that they were calling fluoride, because they say on the website that it's a contaminant and they label it as fluoride. But that's deceiving because that is not the chemical that they're putting in our water. And he, he directed me to the EPD of, the state, of Albany, which regulates for the state. And if for some reason they don't do a good job of regulation, the EPA will come in and do that for Georgia. It does that, it's not like that for every state, but found out that's what, that's what uh, Fedosta is dealing with. And, um, you know, she um, told me the specific chemical. The lady I talked to, uh, Lisa Blunt, actually, and the superintendent is uh, Craig Dozier. But Lisa said that the chemical that we're dealing with is uh, hexafluorosilicic acid. Okay, so they call that fluoride. But if we do more, do more digging on what this actually is, the EPD actually regulates, and EPA actually regulates the amount of contaminant that they can put in our water supply. So it's up to somebody, you know, somebody's, you know, high authority to medicate uh, all of us, your family, your children, everybody. It's been up to the government to dose you because you need it. Uh, so I have a problem with that because I didn't consent to that. I do feel like it's an infringement on my liberties. Uh, so what I found on uh, this chemical, uh, I'll just call it a, a fluoride, quote unquote, okay, was that it, it is not uh, necessarily uh, great for your teeth. And, if it, and even if it was, um, that you don't, you don't need to ingest it. It is good for a topical solution only. Of course, everybody knows, you know, if you look at the back of most of everybody in here, I would suspect, I would, I would love to know that everybody in here wasn't ingesting fluoride or using fluoride toothpaste for that matter. But if you were to look at your toothpaste, you notice that it says that the sodium fluoride in there is a poison. And if you inject a pea-sized amount, to call the poison control center. And this is the same amount that you would find in a glass of water. So why isn't this a big deal? What this is seems to be a huge deal to me. Um, uh, the, the chemical that they we're talking about is considered highly toxic by the EPA. And it is classified as a hazardous waste. It's labeled as a poison and handled by workers wearing industrial safety gear. And the guy I talked to yesterday, Do uh, Dozier, he, uh, he explained that we're spending thousands of dollars to, to put this in our water. So if we do away with fluoride, we'll be saving thousands of dollars quote, you know, from him, and he doesn't carry the weight because he lives in the county, so <laughs> I, I care because if I go into town and want a sweet tea, I don't want to be drinking a hazardous waste uh, that doesn't need to be there at all. There's no, there's no reason it needs to be there. Um, it's over 98% of Europe has, has banned this chemical, um, not to mention in many other states. I, I can't give you the exact number. I looked at a long list of them in the United States that have banned this so I want to implement a petition. I've, I've actually started it earlier tonight uh, for, for people to sign. And every time you sign this, I started it at change.org. Every time you sign this petition, it will send an email to the city council every time someone signs it. So they will get notice that we are tired of this garbage in our water uh, pretty soon, hopefully, uh, you know, people get people on board. I can't imagine anybody that would love to be dosed. You know, and, and is there any regulation on that dose if it's an infant? I mean, they even go into talking about how it's not good. You know, you need to consult your doctor if you want to drink this water on the Valdosta website. I mean, it's just amazing. Like, I, I just, it just, we've been fooled, basically. So, 
Anyway, back to the, uh, the actual uses, where this chemical comes from. Who, who's supplying us with this chemical? Why is it so necessary that we all have this for vein cavities? That's what I wanted to know. But, but through research, you find out that through phosphate mining, you know, it's, a, it's an important mineral. Phosphate is an important mineral in fertilizers. But it's mined from the phosphate rock and uh, to produce phosphoric acid, which we all know is you know, placed in carbonated sodas. And it's one of the main ingredients. And of course, we now know that drinking a lot of sodas can result in kidney stones and loss of mineral, uh, bone mineral density. And uh, this chemical, it used to be released directly from the smokestacks uh, from the mining operations, uh, just directly into the environment. But nearby farms suffered devastating losses of cattle and food crops, which withered away and died due to, guess what, fluoride poisoning. And so the phosphate mining industry, they put in a way to capture the toxic fluoride chemical vapors so they wouldn't be released into the air and kill surrounding livestock and vegetation. This was, an, this was accomplished by wet scrubbers that captured the toxic fluoride chemicals, preventing them from being released into the environment and killing the plant animals life nearby. And it is from these wet scrubbers that toxic fluoride chemicals are now harvested, repackaged, shipped to your local city, and dumped into the municipal water supply. So instead of these toxic fluoride chemicals being released by the phosph phosphate mining smokestacks, they are instead captured and released into the water supply of large cities where they contaminate the water of millions of people at a time. So Toxic, uh, they're, of course, I went over this again, they're toxic hazardous waste and, and under strict EPA regulations. Uh, we are currently supposed to be under four parts per million. But uh, Valdosta is currently, and this is, this is actually a table, this is the current, the most current table they have, which is 2011. Um, we are at 0.86, and it says the range is from 0.41 to 1.87, But so well, let's go into like why why would they think this is so good for us? I mean I don't understand. Given the given the, the percentages here of how much we actually in, ingest uh, of this water, so it says you know research and every it's pretty much common sense uh, that roughly ninety nine percent of the municipal water pumped through any given city ends up in the mouths of, uh, of people. It never ends up in the mouths of people. You you wash with it. You wash dishes. You shower. You wash clothes. Watering yards. Pools. Almost none of that water is ingested and comes in contact with human teeth. Um, it does, however, end up downstream where it contaminates rivers, streams, and ultimately oceans of the world uh, by a convenient loophole. The phosphate industry can dump in its toxic waste byproducts into the environment uh, you know, without adhering to any EPA regulations whatsoever. The only regulation they do is how much they can put in. They don't regulate that well, we don't need to be having it at all. Uh, so the phosphate mining companies in, even turn a profit by selling their hazardous waste to cities, labeling it fluoride, even though its name is scientifically inaccurate. It is not fluoride. It is not naturally occurring fluoride. That brings me to a conversation I had with, with Dozer yesterday. He said that he had to, you know, they were installing a water treatment plant in a city, and they already had naturally occurring fluoride, so they needed to add it. And so I was trying to figure out, well, who's telling you need to add anything, you know? I mean, who's the one saying you have to have fluoride? And pretty much nobody. Uh, but it seems like the phosphate mining industry and its cohorts. But one study conducted by the Center for Endemic Disease Control in China found that, that each additional milligram of fluoride detected in every liter of a child's urine was associated with a 0.59 point decrease in their IQ score. Another study found that fluoride exposure slashed number of children achieving high IQs by more than 70%. And one more thing from the Valdosta page. Um, it says some people may be more vulnerable to contaminants in drinking water than the general population. Immunocompromised persons, such as persons with cancer undergoing chemotherapy, persons who have undergone organ transplants, people with HIV, AIDS, or other immune, uh, immune system disorders, 
Some elderly and infants can be particularly at risk from infections. These people should seek advice about drinking water from their health care providers. Now, this is from Valdosta's website now. They're telling you to seek uh, medical assistance before you drink our water. That's just ridiculous. And so I made the petition, and um, I think I pretty much covered everything. There's a lot of studies. I hear there's, I mean, there's, there's a lot. I, I want to say like 24 plus studies that have been done on fluoride and its negative effects. But it, from what I understand, it ends up in your organs. It doesn't just, you don't just, you know, release excrete it. it your body actually retains it. It ends up being in your body. We have become a contamination grounds of this toxic waste, and it just needs to stop. So I appreciate your, your attention.